Hi, I'm back in Leicestershire and this is another one of Des Ong's hides. This one is set up for kestrels and as you can see it's a trailer hide, it's on wheels. Very convenient to be able to keep moving a hide about so easily, just roll it into a new position. This one is designed for three photographers and you're sitting in camping chairs. And unlike the buzzard hide that I was showing last week, you're not shooting through one-way glass. You're shooting through scrimming. There is a bit of perspex around the frame just to reduce the amount of wind that might come through that open window. The kestrels and later on barn owls are going to land on those perches. But look to your left. That top box is an LED light and underneath it is a CCTV camera, all part of the farm security. Again, I'm using the OM-1 camera with the 150 to 400 mil lens. The subject is a bit further away than when I was here doing the buzzard. So I've certainly got this at the 400 mil end. And yes, at the moment I've got the 1.25 extender in as well. Once the birds land, maybe I'll take the extender out. But I'm thinking I'm going to need it. The male kestrel just came in. I had the 1.25 extender in place, the built-in one, and then I took it out just to see what it would look like, and I got too much sky. You got that horrible white sky at the top. Don't like that effect at all. So on a full-frame camera from here, that's a thousand mil equivalent of. But I say this trailer could be a lot closer. It's easy to move. Whether that's what they do long term, I don't know. The male was a frequent visitor, but the female just hung about in the background. She didn't come close. One of the great features about the OM cameras is if I'm going to do a bird on a branch like this, as soon as I switch the camera on, as soon as I've got everything set up, I just have to turn the top dial to C2 and I reload all the settings that I've saved, which are suitable for doing a bird just sitting on a branch. If I'm going to do a bird in flight, I just have to turn the dial to C1 and I'm ready. Everything's set up for me. If I want to use Pro Capture, I go to C3. It's wonderful to be able to just save the main settings that you use. C4, well that's um, a variable setting. If I'm working on something for a few days and I've got a different sort of settings that I need, I save it as C4. So it's like a, a temporary save if you like. I had to be aware that the background is a little on the dark side so I was going to need to underexpose, especially if the sun was shining. And I was two thirds of a stop underexposed and I think it should have just been one third because the light has actually gone quite dull just before the bird came in and I should have changed that compensation. It wasn't there long enough for me to stop and think about it, but it won't hurt, I'm shooting raw. I can easily make allowances for being one third of a stop out on the exposure. That's the advantage of shooting raw. You don't have to get things right, you can change it afterwards. I can't get out of the habit of making sure I take vertical shots as well as horizontal. This is from the days when I used to be able to make a living from it and you always wanted both formats. From the hide I can look into one of the big barns and there's a barn owl nest box with a barn owl peering out of it. And barn owls start to come into the same perches as the kestrel way before it gets dark. And with a white bird like this, I'm going to have to underexpose even more, perhaps even by one stop. It depends how bright the light is. If it's overcast, two thirds of a stop. If it's very bright, one full stop. There was more than one barn owl coming in and they were very frequent. It's seven o'clock in the evening. It's already getting a bit dull because it's been such a wet afternoon. 
but sun set is until about 8.30 I think. So there's still plenty of light to come, but I'm told the Kestrel will come in less often and the Barn Owl will be coming in more often. And not only that, but we're right in the middle of the farm here. There's lots of farm buildings about me and uh, there's lighting. And as it gets dark, those lights automatically come on. And so you can still see the Barn Owls moving around. I don't know what it's going to be like to photograph under these lights, but it'll be interesting. And then the rain started again. Now, one of the things I've always said about elves is when it rains, you do not see elves. But in Leicestershire, it would appear you do. The shutter speed for these pictures was 6 40th of a second. Ideally, I should have gone a bit slower, because the slower your shutter speed, the longer the streaks of rain. Get down to a 40th of a second and you can get some very long streaks. There's been a bit of activity, both Owl and Kestrel, but it's now 8 o'clock. The light is definitely getting dim. I'm not sure that I could take photographs now if something else came in, because as far as I can tell, those LED lights haven't come on yet. So they come on automatically, but I don't know what time. Five minutes later and they came on. There's one to the left and one to the right and I wasn't that surprised to see the kestrel still coming in. You often see kestrels hunting, hovering up in the air quite late into the evening. And here under the LED lights did look slightly weird. I felt this artificial lighting suited the barn owl far more than the kestrel. Now the LED lights flicker so you need to use a slow shutter speed. Des recommended between 1 hundredth to 1 2 fifth of a second. But if you use too fast a shutter speed, you get this effect. The whole frame has not been lit by the LED. And then the very next frame is fully lit. So you get this flickering from the lights. Sometimes I quite like the effect. Here the bird is just partially lit on his head. Again, going for those vertical shots. Now with the Kestrel and Barn Owl, I decided to concentrate on stills photography. I didn't shoot that much video. But when I did, you could see that flickering effect. Again, I didn't have the right shutter speed. I should have slowed it down. The website details for booking these hides is in the description under the video. And thanks for watching.